एवरीवन इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज प्राइमरी ग्लोमेरुलोनेफ्राइटिस इन योर यूनिवर्सिटी एग्जाम यू गेट अ लॉन्ग क्वेश्चन शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन एंड अ वेरी शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग नाइन इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप ऑफ प्राइमरी ग्लोमेरुलोनेफ्राइटिस हियर सम ऑफ देम आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर लॉन्ग क्वेश्चन एंड सम ऑफ देम आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर शॉर्ट एंड वेरी शॉर्ट क्वेश्चन सो लेट स्टार्ट इट primary glomerulonephritis we are going to discuss all these nine type of primary glomerulonephritis in this session so first of all let's have a overview what we are going to discuss in this session so first of all i will tell you the acute proliferative glomerulonephritis also known as post streptococcal glomerulonephritis that is the first one the second we will discuss is rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis known as rpgn the third we will discuss minimal change disease known as mcd the next we will discuss membranous glomerulonephritis the next is membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis then the next two are focal segmental glomerulonephritis and glomerulosclerosis then ign nephropathy and chronic glomerulonephritis so these are the nine important type of primary glomerulonephritis in our syllabus and we are going to discuss all of them under a fixed set of heading i will let you know the introduction for each of them the etiopathogenesis of each of them gross and the three type of microscopy so here in renal system in glomerulonephritis we study three type of microscopy light microscopy electron microscopy and immunofluorescent microscopy and finally we will see the clinical features so we are going to make a comparative table between them here you can see the nine type of the glomerulonephritis under a fixed set of heading in which the most important is the three type of the microscopy now in the three type of the microscopy the light microscopy we see hna in electron microscopy we see the location of deposits in glomerulonephritis if the deposits are there the location of deposits can be seen on electron microscopy because the magnification of electron microscopy is 1000 times better than the light microscopy and finally in immunofluorescent microscopy we see the composition of deposits we come to know the composition of the deposits here so please understand the relevance of the three type of microscopy on light microscopy we see hna on electron microscopy we see the location of the deposits and on immunofluorescent microscopy we see the composition of the deposit please understand that now what are the nine type of glomerulonephritis we are going to study the first one is acute proliferative glomerulonephritis also known as post streptococcal glomerulonephritis that is apgn or psgn the next is rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis rpgn then minimal change disease mcd you have to learn these three then the next two are connected and next two are connected what are the next two membranous <laughs> glomerulonephritis and membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis please see it again the next two i am saying they are connected with each other one is membranous glomerulonephritis and one is membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis the next two are also connected you can learn as focal segmental both of them are focal segmental one is focal segmental glomerulonephritis and one is focal segmental glomerulosclerosis after that we have two more to study that is iga nephropathy and chronic glomerulonephritis so please study these are total 9 in number you have to learn all 9 in the sequence we are going to study one by one so let's start with the first one that is acute proliferative glomerulonephritis a p g n acute proliferative glomerulonephritis in the introduction you have to write down its other name it is also known as post streptococcal glomerulonephritis that is psgn so you have to learn that a p g n is equal to psgn so either you are getting a question in your exam on apgn or you are getting a question on psgn the meaning is the same you have to write on that only so that is the introduction after introduction come on etiopathogenesis now to understand the etiopathogenesis you have to see this diagram now imagine this is the person and this human this person is having the tonsillitis or skin infection by a bacteria either the tonsillitis pharyngitis or the skin infection skin infection by a bacteria the name of the bacteria is gas bacteria that is group a beta streptococcus bacteria so this bacteria that is gas bacteria group a beta streptococcus bacteria it causes pharyngitis tonsillitis also it causes skin infection also so this person is having either tonsillitis or skin infection caused by a bacteria the name of the bacteria is group a streptococcus bacteria so what will happen this bacteria after causing the tonsillitis and skin infection it will go in the blood 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 from the blood it will go in the kidneys can you see inside the kidney we have filtration barrier so i assume you have watched my video the first video on the renal system in urinary system that is normal anatomy and histology so you may be knowing inside the kidney 